I wanted to show you all some examples of libraries in action. These would be libraries that aren't bundled with p5.js, like the sound library. Uh, and so uh, one of these is something called Rita. Uh, it's made by this guy, Daniel Howe. He, um, he made both a Java version for regular processing and then uh, a JavaScript version that could be used for p5.js or just JavaScript in general. Uh, so it's, he describes it as a software toolkit for computational literature. Um, in this case, what uh, I've done is I adapted one of the examples that he's got um, that takes some text from Kafka and some text from Wittgenstein and rolls them together to make something new that's based off of the way that both of them write. Uh, I've made uh, my own adaptation of that that takes uh, the text of uh, Dracula, at least the, the first chapter or so, and the first chapter or so of Frankenstein, and combines them together and comes up and generates weird strings of text based on the writing styles, or at least how the computer interprets the writing styles of these two. So you can go to uh, the Rita website to find out more about this. Um, you'll see that uh, there's some projects in here. There's, uh, you know, some tutorials and reference uh, worth checking out if you're interested in algorithmic text at all. Uh, so the library itself, um, you can download uh, just the core library, a small version of it or like a full version of it, um, depending on what you want to do with it. I have the full version on my computer anyhow, so that's the one that I used. Um, we'll take a look at the, uh, the, the example right here. I, you can see I've got the library uploaded in the p5.js editor and inside of my index file, I'm pointing to it right here, right? Uh, and so, um, again, this is the thing that you need to do with all libraries. You need to explain where they are pointing to. So the, uh, the experience itself is like this. When you first see it, it says make some text and you click and it'll to pull, what it does is it pulls text from these two uh, files. Let's see, I've got copies up here. Um, and then uh, it runs an analysis on the text and tries to predict uh, through this thing called a Markov chain, what would come next. Uh, so I'll walk you through that in just a little bit, but here's some examples of some of the text that would be generated. Uh, love and will enjoy your journey from the seas with the, which this country. These volumes were mingled with my presence so much to be very far from which has been sleeping soundly then. So it reads almost like Victorian Gothic uh, literature. It's because it's what it's drawing from, right? Um, but it's also total nonsense at the same time. Uh, if you just look at little snippets of it, it seems to make sense. Every time I click, uh, you can see it's generating uh, a, a variety of um, lengths of sentences here. Um, and some of these kind of uh, make sense, uh, others don't. Um, you know, it takes a subject to fall into our hands, I can yield. You are no exercise, prevents the deck and round hats with the sight of my undertaking. <laughs> so, so I'm like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting just seeing how the computer sort of like what it dreams up. So, um, so the, the sketch itself, uh, you can see I've got some variables here. Um, uh, this is to, uh, actually, this is an array that will store all the text that's displayed on screen. This is an instance of the, um, the, the Markov chain from the library itself. This, these are uh, variables to hold the uh, text files. Um, so here you can see I'm just loading the text using load strings into these two variables, uh, and then um, here we've got uh, this array that this holds the text when uh, when it's printed out up here. Um, the, the the library will generate uh, an array of strings. Um, sometimes it'll be sentences. Sometimes it'll, depending on what you ask for, it could be sentences. It could be individual words. I'm just asking for individual words right now. Um, and here you can see this is uh, where I'm actually calling the library. So I'm 
creating a new instance of a Markov model. And then this uh, argument here says how many words this is supposed to look at. And so the way that a Markov chain works is um, it's, a, it's a predictive model where it looks at a certain number of things. And then it says, OK, based on these things that have happened previously, what can I predict will happen next? And so it looks at this block of text and it's like, OK, so uh, I'm going to look at uh, suddenly became. So what words might come after suddenly became? And so it'll search through all the text and it'll see what uh, what it could predict would come next, right? So um, I could increase this and get a, uh, a slightly different uh, model, right? Um, so this is going to start to look a little bit more like uh, these are going to be actual like sentences. Um, depending on the similarity between the text, you might see uh, some things that blend the two together. You might see some things that deviate from each other. But this is really just a, a variable that, that goes in here that determines how much text it's actually going to read and look for. So here we, uh, once we've created the, the, the Markov chain, then we load these models into, um, into it. And then the draw text function here uh, just writes whatever is inside of this uh, lines array, right? Uh, and we're calling join here. So what it does is it looks for a space and then uses that as a deep point of demarcation for writing stuff to screen. So to actually generate things here, we can see we're saying um, uh, Markov generate tokens. And then that gets an argument. And I'm saying somewhere between 50 and 250. And a token in this case is uh, words, right? So this is going to give me somewhere between uh, 50 to 250 words every time I click, right? Uh, you could also generate sentences if I wanted to. And so this will, uh, and we'll make this smaller, right? We'll say somewhere between five and 10 sentences here. Uh, and so this will actually look at, um, so this you can see is actually a little bit more uh, readable, but that's because it's actually looking at whole sentences and using that to to create them. Uh, so um, if you're looking for ways of playing around with text, uh, again, this is a really interesting library. There are a whole bunch of different things you can do with this. This is just one example. The tutorials have a whole bunch of different things, like how to make a bot that sounds like you, uh, generating weird grammars. You can analyze text. You can transform it. Uh, the examples uh, that are in here are kind of interesting uh, and worth looking at haiku generators, um, figuring out features inside of words. Really, really kind of interesting and compelling stuff. So this is just a really short introduction to this. Uh, really worth checking out if you're interested in text uh, and in code together.